I started the race team while she was pregnant with our second. Oh, you're oh, brave. Wow. So, and you weren't um, murdered? <laughs> no. I was, actually, so I was actually in while she was in the hospital. I was sitting there next to her by the bed, and I was typing up a business proposal for the <laughs> race team. I'm used to it. No, I was going with the Tom the Tom Ways uh, mustache. Oh, right? okay. I, I feel like you're I feel like you're pulling off his look right now. Oh, thanks. Nice. I don't know who that is. The the he's a 4400 uh, race car driver. Oh, okay. He, he he drives the Icon. Oh, okay. Um, wow, the nice Icon, one. the orange Icon. The one that's truck. not um, Paul Herschel because Paul Herschel also drives an Icon truck. Hmm. Uh, Rusty, there's a friend on the phone. Yeah, the, the other one, yeah. Yeah, Tom, Tom Ways is the uh, – yeah, he, he's, he's been around for a minute, nice. Tom Ways. He's been driving the same truck for a long time, but uh, he sends it. So how would you get into <laughs> – sorry, let's let's introduce ourselves. Welcome back to the Dirt Drive Podcast. We're recording. Oh, um, oh okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd start right away. My, <laughs> I don't want my computer to die. Um, you got the normal three of us. You got uh, – Tim's here. That's uh, me. You got Trevor. Yep. And Tom. And we're joined by special guest via Facebook video chat this week, Daniel May Applegate. Or is just Daniel yep. Applegate? Yep, May Applegate. You yep, prefer... My uh, parents decided to give me a hyphenated last name. <laughs> nice. so Do you prefer Daniel I... or Dan? Daniel. Daniel, okay. Cool, yep. man. Yeah, he's yep. our uh, he's our friend. He's a 4600 driver for uh, Ultra 4, or and uh, he's uh, he's got a race car team. Yep. Cool. Gear, Ta- Gear Monkey Racing. So tell, tell us a little about yourself and how you got into the, into racing, man. Oh man. So, I mean, I've always been into off-roading. So I grew up in Colorado, uh, started wheeling when I was like 15, got my first Cherokee when I was not even 16 yet. Um, put a little three inch lift on it and, uh, open diffs. And, uh, me and my buddies just, we had a bunch of trails that we'd always go wheel on, um, up in the Rocky mountains there. And, uh, yeah, got hooked. You know, it was um, a safe place for us not to get into too much trouble, <laughs> you know, but enough trouble to where we had to make some emergency phone calls here and yeah. there. So how many Cherokees? Because you, uh, you've got two Cherokees now. How many Cherokees have you had in your lifetime? Uh, I actually, let's see, I have one. <laughs> I currently have four Cherokees. Ah, a connoisseur um, of the garbage. Two, two, two of them are parts cars. Okay. Um, and then... One of them is actually the second Cherokee I ever owned. Oh, nice. Um, so I got, so let's see. When I, <laughs> I got a red Cherokee, I got a 95 Cherokee, uh, or no, 96 Cherokee back in like 2000 and, fuck, I don't know, 2004 <laughs> ish. Sometime back, way back then. And um, basically, I put a little three inch lift on it. I unfortunately got a head on collision in that one Ooh. on a dirt road. Damn. Jeez. Not my fault. Um, and everybody was okay. Good. Uh, I built this janky, I, I, first time stick welding ever. And I built this like two by four, like front bumper on it. Nice. And it took like all the impact. And it was this ugly thing that was like blocky and disgusting. Um, but we had that. And then like a, probably six months after that, I got another Cherokee, red. Um, and then decided that it needed to be upgraded. So we put a six inch full traction lift on it. Nice. And, uh, we, I had it on like the stock axles for a while. And then I was like, that we need bigger axles. So I went nine inch in the back, 44 up front. Great combination. That's what we got under, uh, Trevor's Comanche. Yep. Yep. So I did a lunchbox locker up front, a, um, Detroit in the back and 35 inch tires and sent it. And that thing is, and I put I welded a cage into it. Um, and that's, I still got that. It's out, it's out in front of the shop right now. Do you nice. do all your welding or do you have someone who does the welding for you? Um, so I do all my welding, but on the race car, we had a company build the cage. For okay. Us. Yeah. That makes sense for the race car. Yeah. Cause that also yeah, so go we, through, through tech and we could have, yeah, we could have, but it was just, so I'll get into it here in a little bit, but, um, the timing, like there's no way that my team, me, we all could get together and yeah. do it over a long period of time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I had the red race car. And then when I decided that I wanted to start racing, 
Um, I kept it on the DL with myself and I talked to my wife about it. And uh, she was like, well, if that's what you want to do, sure, you're, you're crazy. Because <laughs> I initially, so I was living in New York City when I started the race team. Okay. So I lived in Manhattan. That's a wild place um, to start a race team, an off-road yeah, race an team. Yeah, an off-road race team nonetheless. Yeah, so I went from, my wife and I went from North Dakota, we moved to Florida, and then I finished school in Florida, and then we moved to New York City. Okay. That's quite, that's a big and, quite the uh, change from North Dakota. <laughs> yeah, the, the the red Jeep got sent to Colorado, stayed at some buddies' places for a number of years, just kind of, it was out there. I would make flights out there and try to go wheeling when we could, um, that sort of stuff. Uh, and then, yeah, so probably in like 2016, I started talking to my wife about wanting to start a race team. And she was like, how are you going to do it? You're in New York. Well, like, I was like, I got an idea. I was like, I'm going to... <laughs> We're going to rent a JK from Hertz Rental, oh. and I'm going to take it to a shop, and we're going to put a lift on it. We're going to throw a roll cage in it. We're going to make it happen overnight, and we're going to race it, and then we're going to take it all off and give it back to them. Was that for Ultra 4, or was oh, that, that for really just a... for Ultra 4, yeah. <laughs> so so you, that, wanted, you, wanted wanted to, you wanted a rental 4600 car? Yeah, that's what I wanted to do initially, and then I read <laughs> through... I, read through the fine I, didn't print. My, I didn't tell anybody about this yet. Um, I then wanted, so then I like I literally read every rental agreement on every rental company in mm. existence, mm -hmm. and they all said that I would be legally bound to pay them back and I could face jail time. And I was oh, like, yeah. eh, maybe I should do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Details. So so ultimately, then I wrote a business plan, business proposal. I pitched it to my buddies. And they were like, you're an idiot. This will never work. And I was like, oh, but it will. They're like, how is it going to work? You're in New York. We're in Colorado. I was like, just hear me out. Let's let's think about this. And I found a Jeep for 600 bucks. That's the, this guy right here. Nice. I got a wa my white um, Jeep I got for $700. Yeah. So it had a blown motor. The body was mint. Everything about it was perfect that I needed. Got it for 600 bucks. My buddies went to go pick it up. And they're like, I guess this is happening. I started <laughs> shipping parts to their houses. Just it, like parts were just piling up. And they're like, okay, we're, we're doing this. And um, they, like, I gave them the job of like stripping out the Jeep, taking all the internals out of it, getting it ready. I found a shop that was going to do the, the frame stiffeners, the roll cage. Um, so all of that was working out over the course of like 2017 um, with our plan to race 2018. Okay. And so over the course of a year, well, they had the Jeep. It was like stagnant for a long time. I was building up parts. And then I came out two weeks before Hammers, 2018. And oh, wow. the Jeep literally had a roll cage in it. Hell, actually, the roll cage wasn't even finished yet. It had half a roll cage in it. Wow. Half the frame stiffeners welded in, <laughs> half the boat sliders. Um, and I was like, this needed to be done. And um, they were like, well, the, the shop that we worked with, um, unfortunately, they, they were dragging a little bit on getting it done. So yeah. ultimately, we had four, We basically put the whole thing together in like 14 days before Hammers. Damn. Damn. Was, you did, wow. did you do it on the lake bed? No, well, <laughs> we did a lot on the lake bed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we, we actually, so we put it all together. Um, I took the front axle out of the red Cherokee that I had. Yep. The, uh, um, that 44. went into the race car. Yep. So that went into the race car and we threw a, like a four, nine inch in the back. Um, completely. The front was trust. The back was not trust. Um, but no, I think we ended up trusting it. Uh, 513 gears, ARB locker in the front, a uh, full spool in the back. Okay. And, um, the, tr the truck wasn't even running properly by the t when we got to the lake bed. <laughs> we were dealing with distributor issue. Um, I blew the, like the front locker wasn't engaging. Um, 2018 KOH, we ultimately started, like we started the race. That was our goal. Is just, just to, to get start. to the start line. And um, yeah, and that's kind of how the team, team started. And uh, the truck has been through stages and stages of repair and <laughs> upgrading and now 
we look back on it. So we raced the entire 2018 series and the 2019 series mm. and just kept falling on bad new car luck. Yeah. And now if we started with this car back in 2018, we would have dominated. Oh and, yeah. You know, it's, it's, we broke, we, we smiled an entire like nine inch rear end. The smiled? front axle. Oh yeah. Smiled it. <laughs> Fucking bent, like, bent it ear to ear. <laughs> Jesus it, it was Christ. bananaed. It was bananaed. Yeah, pretty pretty hardcore on it. Um, the front truss of the the we thought the Dana forty four that I built back in you know years ago was going to suffice. Ripped the entire top of the truss off. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> um, we, I mean, we blew we blew that motor in the first year. We went through a number of bump stops, bends in the frame like we ripped <laughs> wow. off like the entire front end like because the stock class is limited for bump stops yep and so only up until like two years ago were we allowed to put in hydraulic bumps Ooh. Huh. so we were on poly bumps for the first two years just beating the piss out of yourself beating the piss out of the truck oh yeah, yeah. so oh, the yeah. entire front so <clears throat> like where the you know where the spring where the normal bumps are in the cherokee yeah inside those the like metal oil, yeah. tubes like even if you're reinforcing them, it bends up into the sheet metal because they're unibody. Yeah. So it just it just wreaks havoc. So I ended up creating these things, um, like stealing out that whole section, and then we were breaking tops of shock mounts off. Like we broke everything. So <laughs> so now we have a um, a trail gear nine inch housing with like a nodular third member, like cryoed stuff like. You know, we're real, real race car parts. Five thirteens, yeah, yeah, full race car parts. Now we have a <laughs> then like a new Atlas um, race case. Um, the front axle is the only downfall, and that's actually one of the reasons why we ultimately didn't compete this year. Mm. Um, it was uh, among other reasons, um, timing, yeah. and like my work ended up. A project jumped in my lap that I, you know, had to take, and you know. Because now life. I'm in Georgia, my team is still in Colorado, so just life kind of hit. Are you yeah. the only one in but, Georgia with, and you're in the cars with you the whole time? Yeah. Damn. But for the first two years, it jumped around from Colorado to Texas, back to Colorado to, you know, when I got to Georgia, you know, we got it back out here. So it's been, it's gone through its paces. Do you do any other Ultra sure. Four races other than Hammers? Because I know there's yeah, one so the first, in a few in PA this year, a few in. Or there's one in PA. I think there's one down south, okay. like southeast. Oh, yeah. 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 A O A O P Off Road Park. Um, amazing people there, and I'm pretty sure there's a race there in August, um, which we actually might try to do um, this year. Uh, you know, we're it's just like we're in a we're in kind of a transition stage. You know, and I'm sure you you guys talked about the last time for your episode number thirty six. Um, a little bit just like with the new Broncos. Yeah. Yep. The 4600 class is changing. Yeah. And not necessarily, it's a, it's not a bad thing. We need a um, shitbox class. <laughs> that's what you were saying. And, and I mean, <laughs> this truck right here can still put up pretty good numbers. There's a, there's some Cherokees that are still holding their own within yeah. the class. Yeah. I think poor um, boy like, racing is there. They've got a two yeah, Cherokee. Yeah. They, they, yep. they finished yep. this year, but they, they did pretty good right off the bat. Yeah. They, they finished like fifth or sixth this yeah. year. Um, and they, that like, we've always like on King of the hammers that, that race, we always trade places back and forth with the Mac mares pretty regularly. <laughs> um, they're good. They're a good group of guys. And then, um, you know, the Atterberries, they came in with their new Bronco yep. this year. Yep. Um, yeah, you know, I think that the 4600, the, the older cars still have a place, but they have to be bulletproof. Yeah, there's, yeah. there needs to be like a, 40, you, a 46 Legends class almost for the... <laughs> you have to drive the piss out of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's, my, my biggest argument this year with the Broncos is like, I feel like portals are such a cheat code for 4600. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I also get it because, like, I mean, you're not exactly stock either if you're running Atlas and fabricated nine inch housings and things. But yeah, I just like portals specifically really, 
I don't know. It just doesn't seem like oh, yeah, that the, fits in an everyman challenge. The, the portals or, with the clearance of IFS and all that shit. Yeah. yeah it, it really takes it to a different level. Yeah. Like, it, I mean, it definitely does. But I mean, I could put portals on this thing if I want. You could. To. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get, I, you know, so I just think that takes the everyman part of it out. Right. Cause it's not like they're cheap. You know, you can get, it, I can go buy a nine inch for a couple hundred bucks and basically build your Jeep easily right those parts are available nah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't i don't have to i don't have to special yeah, order or anything it won't be a tra- it won't be a trail f- or a trail fab fabricated housing and it won't be yeah, yeah sure but, but you could you could go get yeah, junkyard parts, parts yeah. yeah yeah well i think i think with the um with the portals um i don't have an issue with them personally um i i see what you're saying but it, it's not so much for the every man if you if we look at the every man of like oh everybody can race in it it's yeah. not actually that right it's yeah. an expense it, regardless of oh, what yeah. it is it's oh, yeah, racing yeah, yeah. and it's it's extremely expensive whichever way you hash it i mean it's expensive yeah. to go out um, it's it's 50 to a hundred thousand dollars to, to buy and build a car that's ready to race this yeah. race it's not yeah. yeah i mean you know like this thing it, it's a cherokee but between all of the stages that it's gone through yeah. easily sixty thousand dollars yeah. oh, yeah. seventy thousand oh, yeah. dollars and I mean, between all much- the stages between all the shit that's broken between the three motors that's been put through it. What are you talking uh, about? You babied that thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you've seen the pictures. It, it, yeah. I, I just, I leisurely drive it. Yeah. 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 It's a Sunday um, driver. I mean, outside of exactly. the four liter, so, what's, what's still original Chrysler in it? Well, it's not even a four liter. It's a stroked four seven. Okay. So, so, <laughs> so nothing. <laughs> the sheet metal, um, the sheet metal, the sheet metal. So the motor, um, we uh, we actually when we built this motor, um, we actually had it entirely cryoed uh, with CTP cryogenics out yeah, of California. Please. So they cryoed it for us, and um, we, I mean, it's built um, from Russ Pottinger. He was the one that did all the internals. He did all the head work. So it's LS valves and springs. <laughs> um, Damn. You know, it's uh, it's pretty good. I think we're like three hundred to the crank. Which is pretty Jesus like Christ for a chair. right That's in awesome. the middle yeah. of like, I mean, there's some guys that are pushing their trucks to like 375, like 400, and but you're you're at that limit like, you're you're dealing with heat issues, you're dealing yeah. with like you know a lot of other things. So we wanted to kind of a moderate build that wasn't gonna, you know, send rods through yeah. through <laughs> things and, into outer space. So, yeah, I got it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we built this and. Like 100 miles in, we actually had a cam bearing go out on us. Oh. He's the installer, the guy that built it mm. out of California, dicked it up. Damn. Damn. I won't name drop, but I was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was would that imagine. was that on a race weekend or was that just testing? Yep. Blew, blew it up in Tennessee. Oh, oh shit. Oh. On a race. Yep. Fuck. Damn. It lo- it it locked up and oh. it stripped all the teeth off of the timing gear oh. and uh <laughs> sent two rods through the rockers and uh it was not pretty and his, yeah. his, his warranty probably isn't that good either is it what warranty? Oh, there was no warranty yeah, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. exactly yeah uh, and so, and you can see the burn mark on the can journal like on, on the bearing oh. you can see the burn mark where the hole like the oil feed hole was sitting wow. so you knew that it wasn't lined up properly shit uh, yeah that's, that's a killer but, we got it fixed. We we built it back up. You know, we changed all of the shit that we needed to change, and now the motor's like been running perfect. Yeah. So, so how long have you been? But yeah. So, oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, um, but to go back to your question, the things that are stock on it, the block, the head's been worked on, um, the sheet metal. We have a at a, a AX15. Um, mm, okay. Manual transmission in there. Um, it's only been slightly rebuilt um and that's literally like we looked at it and said okay it looks fine um, <laughs> so why'd you why'd you go with a uh, a manual on a race car instead of an automatic um strength i i really like the manuals it's like okay. my red cherokee is a manual that's what i've driven i'm comfortable with it and you don't deal with the overheating issues yeah you don't deal with the extra garbage that an auto brings um so I like it. And with the off-roading, like, you know, if you've ever driven a manual off-road, you know that you, you find that balance between, like, mm-hmm. the yeah. clutch and the gear, and you can kind of play with that a little bit more. Yeah, that's wild, so, though, because you don't see a lot of manual race cars. Yeah. So that's pretty unique. No. Yeah, yeah I've always liked it. Um, 
So we've we've talked about like switching over to an auto, but it's like, what's the what's the point? Yeah, yeah. So to, to get stick, a, stick with what we know. Would it have to be a a factory auto? So it would have to be an AW4. Yep, had to be an AW4. We'd probably put like I think Baja Design or some some or who does, who is it Baja? Somebody makes like a like a better shifter for oh. the. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, you, you probably the rad design shifter. Yeah, I, I've got yeah, one rad, in rad mind. Designs. Yeah, yep. it works great. I yeah. love it. My rad design shifter is amazing. Yeah. It would, which it shifts just like a manual, but it's just no clutch. Yeah. So okay. So I, I really enjoy it. If you ever thought about going, I would highly suggest rad designs. Yeah, that, and that that's kind of what we would end up doing. Um, but you know those races are are long. They're tedious yeah. on shit. The heating issues. I know a lot of guys have had issues with them, like overheating. Yeah. Um, you know and. You have to find creative ways to dissipate heat in yeah. these things without breaking the rules within you know the context. <laughs> yeah, of and those, the those Cherokees class. love heat. My yeah. Cherokee loves to get hot. So yeah. This one will never overheat again. Oh, I don't think so. mine will either. Knock on wood. But it's got <laughs> it's got three electric fans venting through the hood everywhere. It, it fucking it well, does good we're, now. We're running a. Um, an aluminum radiator, radiator up front, mm-hmm. and a full-size heater core. And I put that in quotes. I know that the audience can't see these quotes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, it's a full-size heater core off the heater core lines that goes up, and it's behind the driver and passenger seat. Okay. And um, oh. So it's, it's not a radiator, but it acts like one a little bit, but it's not. I, yes, I'm going to repreface. It is not a radiator. <laughs> for, for the rules officials yeah, listening, yeah. it's a heater <laughs> core. It's a heater core. It's the heat, the it back is a, seat. It is, a, it is a heater <laughs> core. It's February in the desert, so yeah. it's cold as fuck. You need, a, you need a heater core in there. Got it. Exactly. Yeah, it keeps the back seat so, nice and warm. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, we, you know, you just find all, all these things, you know, racing. And yeah. even though we've been racing for a number of years now, it's like, we finally have a machine that we can go, and then the Broncos show up, and we're like, "Well, maybe we should look at building something different." Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. keep the XJs. Nudge, nudge, hint, hint. Yeah. No, Shit boxes nudge, for hint, life, yeah, man. We're, we're we're right now we're working with a company, um, Bronc Broncbusters. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They, yeah, we know Broncbusters. I'm actually wearing their "Let's Go Bronco" shirt under my hood. Oh no, hey. I was wearing it earlier. T- Tyler <laughs> I, will be happy. I, I forgot I changed. So, yeah. Um, you know, so that you know them, they they make <laughs> yep. the um, yeah. aftermarket parts for yep. Bronco, um, and I'm working with uh, Tyler right now on a few different projects, and we'll see where that okay that that lands in the next year. So yeah, one of our crops. customers got featured in one of their blogs because he basically blew, blew up his steering rack. rack. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what Bronquester is doing is great. He's building some amazing products. And, oh yeah. You know, able to oh, you know, yeah. help help the guys that are getting into the Broncos and wanting to wheel them, mm-hmm. yep. giving them without having to like break the bank yeah. to yeah. some options to like fix their shit before they break it. Yeah. yeah. I know, uh, I know 74 well just came out with a whole new steering rack for those things, which it, it, it'll be curious. I'm curious to see as they start fixing the weak spots, what other weak spots come up in uh, mm. in these Broncos? Well, fixing the weak spots and see how strong they get because I mean they're already not a bad off roader. Sure. So so fixing fixing the the weak links is going to make it a really capable car. Yeah, I think I think there I think there's more than just the steering issues yeah, yeah. with them. Um, but but it's like it's the first generation. Look, it worked out over time. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's yeah, interesting yeah. where they go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and you got to remember, every time you strengthen one area, yeah, it weakens another. On something else. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's why I think the steering racks got discovered so quick, is everybody had the uh, tie rod braces, and everybody mm-hmm. put the tie rod braces on, and then all that stress went straight into the end caps of the the racks and yeah, pop. Yeah. Well, now, we're going to talk about the parts that just blow up on yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. We we've we've got a bunch of customers that have come through the shop, yeah. and you know. Tie rod braces, lift kits, 37s on factory suspension, yeah. doing the JKS yeah, high clearance kit, all that stuff. It's cra- okay. it's crazy what they can do oh, yeah. from the factory. You know, it's I think a, a Sasquatch Bronco compared to a Rubicon is light years ahead. But they're like I think Ford just missed a few small details that Jeep had. <laughs> yeah. The 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 benefit of experience to to figure out yeah. ahead of time. 
you yeah. know, it's, it helps when Dane is building all your axles. You know, they know the weak <laughs> points where Ford's just kind of winging it. <laughs> well, I mean, Dana, Dana is putting, you know, they've made the front axle for, yeah. for the Oh, Fords, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, yeah. So they're, yeah, they make the differential. <clears throat> uh, yeah. But I, I just, you know, some of those Ford parts. I'm not a big Ford guy. I've, I've been working on cars for way too long to <laughs> ever own a Ford. <laughs> uh, there you go. But I, 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 I'm impressed. I still won't buy one just out of principle. Yeah. Uh, but I do, I do like so, them. Hold on. So, 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 what kind of truck do you drive? Uh, I have a Chevy Duramax. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I've sense. got, I've got a Duramax. Trevor has a, a five three GMC. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, GM, GMC. Well, I, I have a 2001 Ford. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, oh, one. Yeah, yeah. This is the seven three, I, right? I have, I have the seven three with yeah. the manual. Okay. Right. That's yeah. a good yeah. one with the manual. Yeah. That's. You're a real manual yeah. boy, aren't you? <laughs> I like them. Hell yeah. Hey, it'll never get stolen. <laughs> yeah. it, you know what? It try, actually, somebody tried to steal in Colorado when I was out there last. No oh, shit. No shit. <laughs> yep. Yep. And they were trying to jump in. They couldn't do it because it was a manual. Yeah. <laughs> so it's true. Yep. Did you just walk up to the true. window and go, hey, you got to push put that the, third put, put pedal the, yeah, in? Yeah, put the clutch in. Well, I mean, also, the cops are on the way. They, yeah. So, yeah, it was a wild <laughs> evening, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they were trying to steal it, and uh, my daughter, and so, so my daughter actually like she rolled out of the bed and hit the, like the floor, and I, I was like startled by that, and I got up and was helping her, and then I heard something outside, and I look out, and they're all scrambling to get back in their car, and I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, you should thank your daughter <laughs> so, for the you know, rest of her life. So yeah. I, I, I know. So I like I like grab my gun now. and like yeah. head down there, and uh, you know we're at a friend's place, and. So, and, you know, like I have my truck, like it had bikes in the back, it had spare mm. parts, it, you know, it has like a utility bed on it. So it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, four extra tires like racked oh, up on it. Damn. Like, and so I, I run out there, you know, they're gone by then. And um, they like drop their screwdriver, like their like janky screwdriver that they've been hot, like jumping cars <laughs> with for years. <laughs> they left that in like on the floorboard. That's awesome. And, uh, my, I still can't use a key on the on the driver's side. Like, oh, jeez. Like, punch it out. But I realized that they literally couldn't steal it because they couldn't get it yeah. started. That's They're like, yeah, oh, this piece of shit won't even start. That's it's not worth stealing. Yeah, like, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess Sorry, I gotta get rid of my Jared, Allison Jared. now. Yeah. All the all yeah. those memes are coming true now. <laughs> Oh, yeah. stop, stop a whole generation of thieves. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Wow. I, was, I was thankful for it. So, <laughs> so how does um, having a race car team in a family like a – because you said you've got, what, one or two kids? I have two kids. I have two a kids? seven-year-old, which is my son, Byron, and then my daughter, Genevieve, who is four. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, how does, how does that go with a, like a full race team? Uh, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> not bad. They, 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 Your wife comes you know, out a lot, is, right? <laughs> my no well she's just very understanding yeah, yeah. there it is she's, <laughs> she's without her none of this would be possible understanding yeah. or just accepting of the fact at yeah. this point yes oh good good uh accepting yeah, that, that, yeah. I, I think it's more accepting the fact that i'm an idiot yeah, yeah. And, our wives are all and, the same <laughs> and, and she's stuck with me yeah, yeah. yeah there it exactly. is exactly yep yeah. I, I know the, i know um, the feeling with the shop <laughs> my, my, i work till two o'clock in the morning friday night and yeah, you know, just got home, showered, crawled into bed. She's like, "Oh, a long day." I was like, "Yep." Well, she has to understand that one. That was for her own yeah, uncle. That, that so. yeah, it's not yeah. the only time I've done that, though. Yeah, also true. <laughs> yes, no. So it's a uh, it's a balance. But um, I started the race team while she was pregnant with our second. Oh, you're oh, brave! Wow. So, and you weren't um, murdered? <laughs> no, I was actually. So I was actually in while she was. In the hospital, I was sitting there next to her by the bed, and I was typing up a business proposal for this <laughs> That's something I would do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we've got our um, we've we've got our first one coming this week. So yeah. yep. Yeah. So Trevor, Trevor and his wife are delivering on Friday or Saturday. They haven't figured that out yet. Uh, right? it's, it's supposed to be Friday. We go in yeah. Thursday. So yeah. Okay. So this will be well, the last time everybody sees Trevor. Exactly. Bye, yeah. Trevor. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be for, around for a lot like, more than Tom. Well, for for the first like six months, you're you're gonna be uh, oh yeah sleep yeah. deprived and and basically a I'm slave sleep deprived now. Your, That's your nothing new. <laughs> and, your, and your wife, yeah. So, but it'll be good. That's oh yeah, awesome. I'm, congratulations! I'm, thank man. you. I'm I'm very excited. Yeah, it's uh, it'll be interesting. And Tom Tom's a couple months behind yeah. me, so oh, well, few. Okay. My my wife's due in July, so I yeah. got some time. 
Okay. So yeah, it's interesting right. to see how people operate, like still continue to operate because we see so many p- people fall off yep. when they have kids out, like, out yep. of the off- off-road sphere. So it's interesting to see people still operate. And I'm hoping that these guys still. Yeah, we'll be fine. I don't really have a choice. I mean, my, <laughs> yeah, my we'll life kind of revolves around off-roading these days. I see your third yeah. child in the background there on uh, the yeah. chair. Oh, yeah, that's Bruce. Yeah. Hi, Bruce. Bruce. Yeah, so there hey, he buddy. Say hi to Rusty. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, look at Rusty. We got friends, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> um, for everybody that can't see what we're doing, we're sharing pictures of yeah, our dogs. Yeah, yeah. You're much better at podcasting than <laughs> yeah. we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we always forget that like people only listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. So with a family and everything, you know, I mean, both my kids. When we were in New York, um, the first two years, I actually took Byron to all the races. Oh, that's nice. wow. wasn't, That's awesome. He wasn't. He was still under the age of two, um, Damn. and I was able to, you know, basically take him for free on the planes. Nice. Oh, nice. Um, because I would fly out, and then you know I'd have like my mom meet me out there. I'd have a friend meet me out mm. there, um, and, and watch him. Yeah. You know, they would watch watch him while I was racing. That's awesome. Um, so we did that, and Byron's Byron's been to King of the Hammers once. <sighs> Um, that Lucky was the year that he and I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that was the year that he and I both got deathly sick and oh. had to go to Palm Springs emergency room. Were they, was or, that was that hammer lung or was that something else? Oh, it was some. It was um, upper respiratory garbage. Mm. Yeah, that I mean, yeah, it was not good. It <laughs> yeah. was miserable. So does yeah, he already know um, how to drive at this point? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he has a he has a go kart that he rips around in. Nice. That's uh, awesome. My my daughter, uh, you know, she has a Power Wheels that she rips around yes. in. Um, yes, yes. F- second know, generation. My, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, my son didn't get to be in the shop as much as my daughter, honestly, mm. um, because when we moved out here um, and during COVID, I stopped working um, in New York, so I wasn't traveling out there anymore. Okay, and um, as much, and so I was watching the kids. And, you know, my wife went back to work because she took a year off when we first moved. Um, so we kind of swapped places. So I was in the shop just working on the car all the time. Yeah. And with my with my daughter. So there's, you know, we had like <laughs> yeah. a mattress that I'd pull out for her. She'd sleep in the bathroom. You know, nice. Like, you know. Just you mean a full safety crib that yeah. she had no way of getting out of. Oh, no. She had definitely a way of getting out of. <laughs> definitely dangerous situations everywhere. Yeah. As any true I, mechanic I, father would do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our rule. Our rule was if you don't know what it is, don't you're touch not allowed it. to touch it. Yeah. yeah That's my rule. I have that rule in the shop right now. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, I have that rule in my house with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's and it's also if, if you if I've never shown you how to use it, you can't operate it. That's yep. So yep. Again, you know, t- but, you know, same like rules my, for Tim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so you know like my son though you know I give him a box cutter and now he knows how to use it. So it's like, okay, it's usually a dull one because, yeah. you know, let's be, let's be real. Yeah. 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 Still a child. <laughs> but, but uh, no, they're both pretty good in here. So they, I mean, they've helped me with this so many times. It's un, unreal. That's nice. awesome. That's car. awesome. Yeah. So what, so what do you do for a living that allows you to go from uh, New York city, yeah. New York to coming Georgia? So funny roundabout story um, <laughs> in New York. I did set design for photo shoots. Oh, okay. okay. So I actually, so when I first got out there, I actually worked in art galleries. Uh, my background is art administration. Wow. Um, so I installed artwork, very expensive artwork in galleries and collectors' homes. Um, and when I say expensive, I'm like talking like millions, millions of dollars. dollars pieces that yeah. that I've worth way more than like your a, shit box. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and like <laughs> I'm, I'm hanging them on like a nail that's like. All of like half a cent. Yeah, you know, like, wild. Yeah, that'll hold. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going anywhere. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so, so the race car team was really just like letting the other half of your personality show because you have print yeah, and proper and, for art galleries, and you're like, let's go fuck shit up in the woods. Is the other. Yeah, half. and and you know, it's, it's you know, New York. It's such a difference yeah. in oh, like, yeah. lifestyle and balance, and, and it's just like part of me that's always there. It's like I've been. I I camp, I hunt, I fish. Yeah. And then you put me in this like urban jungle and it's like yep. Oh, you can hunting. still camp and hunt and fish, just not anything you would actually eat. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I don't like, think anybody pigeons, fishes. Pig, like, yeah, p- yeah. Pigeons, yeah. And pigeons trash. in Central Park. <laughs> FBI cameras, not pigeons. <laughs> and then and then from that I transition into um set design and um like basically set design and prop styling for photo shoots. So I worked um, 
high-end fashion um, for some big companies. Um, Wild. Yeah, gonna, of, gonna admit, uh, not, was not expecting that yeah, answer no, yeah. at, like, yeah, I figured, at all. I figured, like, IT or something. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, no, oh, what do you, you work on Jeeps and what else? Oh, into high fashion and uh, yeah. art gallery setups. Yeah, no, I, I worked on, like, Victoria's Secret. I worked on Banana Republic. You lucky bastard. Um, <laughs> I did I did a lot of a lot of that stuff out there. Um, did stuff for fashion shows. So That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. That's so cool. And then, and then we moved to Georgia, and I was like, sweet, back to... Yeah, yeah. Stuff, yeah. back to country and boy and shit. Yeah, and uh, I I still go out there. I do um, micro rigging for a cinematographer out there probably every other month. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so doing stuff for like Netflix and that kind of thing. Huh. Damn, dude. Um, uh, did you work and then when on? I got out, what was the show that uh, I talk about the building session with the Graz? Mm-hmm. Um, oh shit, what was the name of the show? Because they filmed up in New York or just north of New York, um, making fun. Did you work on no, making fun at so, all? So I work, so the stuff that I do, um, the cinematographer that I work with, um, Chris Webb at FX Works, um, we do, I do like micro rigging. So for products and like, I do like little robots basically uh, that like turn products and like around in okay. circles or, you know, like you have to rig this ring just right so that the probe lens can like come in and like look at it and it spins in front of the camera and then it like moves out. So it's a lot of like stuff for before the film starts, you know, like the lead ups uh, okay. to a lot yeah. of films. It's like all that credit line stuff oh, that cool. you see They're, that are really like really beautiful movements and artistic like styles of things. Very hmm. detail oriented so, stuff. Very, very detail oriented stuff. So that's what I do out there. And then here in Georgia, um, I have a firework stand so that and i have a uh photo studio um which right now in the photo studio is a race car <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and a dog yep so i do and a dog so i do uh product photography and nice. then i do i i do some creative directing as well um with a photographer out here so nice i just kind of do a little bit of all of it anything that i my biggest thing was like i don't ever want to do anything that i hate because i've yeah. done yeah. that in the past um or the <laughs> people that. I, it wasn't that I was doing something that I hate. I hated people that yeah. I hate yeah. with a lot of the time. Yep. Um, they're just, you know, if people have bad vibes, you don't work with them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's kind of where I was at after we moved out of New York. And so I only go back and work with Chris because he's the only person that I really liked. Other. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, so I transitioned out to here and just wanted to do what I wanted to do. So you did, you did so, the COVID thing and like chased your passions and then got out of the big city. Like, like that seemed to we be a really right before COVID. Yeah. yeah we moved oh, wow. eight months before COVID. Damn. Yeah. It seemed to be a really popular thing for COVID is, yeah. is fuck the bullshit. I'm going to do what I enjoy doing with people <clears throat> I enjoy doing it with. So that's pretty cool that, that I guess you were ahead of the curve with that, but that's pretty cool that that's why you moved. What, what drew you to coming? Uh, my parents lived out here. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so my very- parents, my older sister, family was out here. We just had our second kid. We moved when she was like eight or nine months old out of New York. Okay. Yeah, it's it's, um, it's a very weird spot because I've got my, – my grandparents lived in Cumming, and I've got oh, uh, really? an aunt and a cousin who are all still in Cumming. Yep. That's wild. Very, it's yeah, very I mean, weird. It's a- so when I found that out because you got – I got your address for it so we could send you a t-shirt and I'm like, what the hell? It's so small. And then there's, um, uh, Aries, Aries fab is incoming. Um, mm-hmm. and then there's another hot rod shop that does, uh, LS conversion stuff that's incoming. Really? It's a really like for being such like a, a small, like community, there's so much stuff and so many people there. I mean, it's getting bigger. It, it definitely is. I mean, coming is constantly growing. Um, and I see that because my fireworks stand is constantly selling more fireworks. Every <laughs> yeah. Year, so. Is it just up all year round? No, I'm seasonal. Okay. So I, I, I can only do things that like are in chunks of time for me. Yeah. Like, is it an it ADD just, thing? Maybe. That's right. You're not alone. You got 80 of them. <laughs> could, could, could be. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I think it's – for me, it's more that I – I just like to constantly be doing something and for like the fireworks season, it, I plan it into my year yeah. and my wife knows like, Oh, she's just not going to see me for X number of weeks yeah. because I'm doing that. And then it's like, Oh great. Now I can move on to my other projects. Like right now 
in the shop, I'm building a new firework stand. So I'm building a 40 foot stand for the company that I work with. Um, and, uh, you know, so they hired me to, you know, fabricate windows and weld stuff up and nice. make a new stand for them. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, just, I just like doing the things that I want to do. Yeah. 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 There seems to be and a, and, and honestly, any, anybody should be doing that. Yeah. Everybody yeah. across oh, the yeah. board. Like yeah. if you hate what you're doing, stop. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's why Tom started the shop. Yeah. That's why Trevor's working at the shop. That's why I'm running the podcast. Yeah. Because like, it's yeah. all no, stuff it's awesome. we, we really enjoy doing. And it's, it's so cool to see that you've designed your entire life around that. That's, yeah. That's pretty fucking awesome. Well, I appreciate it. I, I, mean, I mean, that's I try, the American dream you know, right there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying, you know, and, and you know, every, you know, it, being an entrepreneur and having your own businesses, it definitely has its ups and downs, but it's, you got, and you guys know that, but it's yeah. uh, the the freedom that it gives you. It's like I don't miss my kids, my son's hockey games. You know, I don't miss yeah. my daughter in gymnastics. You know, I'm able to do all these things yeah. that give me freedom, and you know that in itself is happiness, and happiness yeah. is the goal. Oh yep. yeah, for real. Yeah, absolutely. Well, especially when a race car is involved. That's, yeah, that definitely, <laughs> definitely helps with the happiness. Yeah. Hey, boss, I'm gonna be gone for a few weeks yeah. for a race. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the well, fuck you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like King of the Hammers, I'm gone for three weeks. Yeah. 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 yeah it's a week to drive there, and a week week to race, and a week to drive home. Yeah. I mean, on the East Coast, man. You know, yeah. like next oh, year yeah. when you guys go, right? <laughs> yeah. Next year when you I guys go. like the optimism. We, we were we were talking about that. We're like, we want to go out for a recovery so we can get like good content of yeah. being up next to the guys yeah. who are stuck and pulling them out. So I called uh, Daniel on Wednesday to give like a little rundown of like the show and everything, and my, I let him know that we we're trying to go next year. Oh yeah. yeah. So. I would love pretty, to. Pretty, pretty excited for yeah, that. I, I think I'll skip SEMO to do K oh, Hammers. Oh, yeah, 100%. Look at that yeah, face. He's like, whatever. fuck yeah, skip SEMO. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to go see more shitty welds and <laughs> bullshit cars. Like, yeah, I, I, I've definitely gotten benefit out of it as a shop owner, but like, I think now that I've done it a couple times, I'll limit it to a couple days you know, target specific people, specific things, and then... It's definitely not an every year thing. Yeah. 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 Not unless we start actually building cars. I've yeah. always said it would be cool to, like, introduce shit boxes into the SEMA world. You know, just, like, really beautifully fabricated functional parts. On garbage. On just, garbage. On, on just rusty, <laughs> wrinkled garbage and just stick it in the parking lot. There you I go. Just, uh, you know, kind of like the rat rod for the off-road world, just because, like, the off-road world is... It's represented at SEMA, but it's all brodozers. It's all overland. It's all high dollar stuff with no drive shafts. And it's like, how cool would it be to just have Tim's eight hundred dollar hacksaw XJ in the parking lot with <laughs> with not a straight panel 50 on it, fifty grand worth of drivetrain <laughs> under it that's perfectly painted and beautiful. So, so a race car, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, just like take like a uh, find like the best Cherokee you can. Yeah. And oh, so not build tense. up the build, build up the entire <laughs> lower portion to right. where it's just like gorgeous, yep. and then chop chop the niceness off of it. Oh, and yeah. Put a shitty one on top of it, yeah. basically. And then boom, you've yeah. got like the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. you take it to I SEMA mean, it, and then, it then leave it apart. Then right? leave it in Vegas and then take it racing and at yeah. Hammers. Hell yeah! Yes, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and then five thousand dollars later, you're still broke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we say that all the time. We look at stuff, like our yeah. customers come in, and we're like, "God, we're poor." Yeah, like this. This hurts. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, if, I mean, like, you guys talked about it a little bit on the last episode about hammers, but I mean, you guys were off a little bit on the numbers. But it, usually, for me to go out to hammers and back, it's easily five thousand dollars. Yeah. That's not horrendous though for for a week's worth of racing and like as a race team that's not that expensive relatively speaking. Yeah, for fuel for I, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, for me, like it fuels on me because the team doesn't go out. Like, and my team's awesome. Like the guys that that drive out there, you know, they're they're putting in their own PTO, their own money into getting out there, and we all split the cost on the, like the food and the housing and that kind of yeah. stuff, um, which is amazing. Like, yeah. and I couldn't do it without them because, like, having the support out there is just wild. Devin and Jeremy and Byron, like, all these guys, like, they take the time out of their lives to, to come support, and it's pretty... Are pretty they are they buddies from pre-race car days, or are they... Uh, yeah, did you so find them? By, 
Byron, he doesn't make it out to as many races as Devin and Jeremy, but he and I have been friends since like the first grade. Oh, damn. Oh, wow. Okay. And he and I started wheeling together back when we were like 15, 16. Nice. Oh, yeah. um, went to high school together, played hockey together. And then I got arrested. I didn't realize you were a hockey college. guy. So I grew up playing hockey yep. and Tom grew up playing ice hockey. Yeah. Nice. Still That's do pretty occasionally. Cool. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> did, did you guys like play in college or anything? Or did no. you guys, how far <laughs> did you guys go? No, not no. that good. I played no. in high school. You assume a lot. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a hack beer Listen. leaguer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I played I mean, JV in the, high you school. Got the beer, you got the beer league stash, so I, yeah. I oh yeah, it. it's that's, the firefighter stash. Yeah, it's the fire department. I, and I assume you guys have watched Shorzy, and you guys have watched oh, Letterkenny. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you haven't, then you guys aren't really hockey players. What is it, Shorzy? I haven't seen <laughs> it's, Shorzy. It's the Letterkenny. It's the Letterkenny. Guys. Letterkenny. Okay. It's like yeah. their hockey spinoff. It's oh, fantastic. Yeah. I'd be it's so, so good. good to you. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. So I played hockey my whole life, and still, I'm actually coaching my son's hockey now. Oh, nice. and, you know, try to do some drop in here and there, but nice. Yeah. You know, try. I'm pretty rusty. <laughs> uh, I'm always rusty. I, That's... <laughs> I, I went in. I did a drop in like two weeks ago, and basically, I was like 15 minutes in. I'm like, holy yeah. shit! Yeah, yeah. there I'm it is. Out of shape. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've, I've been thinking about getting back on the ice. It's been probably five years since i've skated and i'm like i would probably fucking kill myself we're, 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 but i'm gonna do it we're talking about trying to resurrect the uh, ashburn fire team oof <laughs> do it guys no do things. it I, I, that's so like I, I as a kid i always played goalie i never i was never a skater and with my beer league career <laughs> i started out as a goalie and then didn't have time to play full time so i kind of became a skater sub and I hadn't like skated skated in probably 20 years and I was dying that first game. It was bad. It was really bad. Some guy tried to fight me because he's like, you suck at hockey. I'm like, I'm a fucking goalie. <laughs> <laughs> he was all mad because I ran into him because I couldn't stop. I'm like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Leave me alone. I stand in a two-by-two two space and yeah. move side to side. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, uh, I'm, I'm skating like I have giant pads on. Yeah, me. exactly. <laughs> Basically. Short, short strides. Getting yelled at. You're like taking, you're like taking wrist shots left-handed, yeah. even though you're right-handed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, pretty much. Trying to, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Uh, trying to catch the puck you. midair. Yeah, yeah. it's it's I legal it. as long as you don't close the hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to remind oh, myself funny. when I'm not playing goalie to like not stand directly in front of people's shots. <laughs> like, don't drop to your knees. This will hurt. <laughs> yeah. Definitely restart the team though. That's you guys oh, yeah. can start doing the podcast in the locker rooms. So. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be that'd be uh, wild. Oh. Yeah. yeah, there's some there's it, some it characters like the, at the fire department too. That would it'd uh, be like the podcast. Uh, it'd be like uh, the. Uh, like Dirt Nerds Off Road Locker Room Series, <laughs> <laughs> no, little that, spinoff. Oh, we 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 have, we have some guys in the group that might enjoy that too much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So back back to the hammer stuff. Um, you know, it's without the team, like we we couldn't do what we do. You know, yeah. they they keep us all together, and and uh, you know, putting in the time and energy is pretty amazing. So, but yeah, all of those guys have been friends for years and years and years, and they. Um, you know, Jeremy and Devin, they're both engineers, electrical engineers, oh, damn. um, you know, and they both have amazing rigs that they've been building over the <laughs> years. Uh, and you know, Devin's the numbers guy. So he can tell you, like, I can say, Hey, what size bolt is the lower control arm mounted with, you know, he's like, Oh, that's like a, you know, three quarter inch bolt with yeah. fine thread. So the torque <laughs> spec on that is such and such. And, <laughs> you know, the brake load on that will be this. Damn. And, you know, you know they just they Engineers. know this truck better than I do. Yeah, and yeah. they they engine they've engineered the shit out of it, which is pretty impressive. So does, does the team for, manage itself pretty well? Or are you in charge of keeping everyone together and keeping stuff in line? How does that work out? Um, we so Jeremy is our crew chief. Um, he manages when we're out actually at the hammers of the races. He kind of manages and oversees kind of the steps in the process of what needs to be done on the truck. You know, if there's an issue that I find, like I give it to him to to kind of figure out and he kind of takes the lead on figuring out how to fix it, what needs to be done. Um, you know, on race, race time, I try to focus a little bit more just on like the course and pre-running and yeah. how do you keep, kind of get in the time. So, so racing is pretty tough on, on the driver and the car. How do you keep yourself ready to race for, to sit in a car for eight hours and, and just get the shit beat out of you? What do you, <laughs> what do you do to prepare yourself for that? I wish it was only 
48 hours. Every time we've been in, like, it's been like 10 to 12 hours in that car, which is pretty brutal. Um, you, you just try to stay healthy going into yeah. it. You know, we, you know, before hammers, we're not really drinking. We're trying to drink water. We're trying to stay hydrated. Yeah. Um, you know, we have our race notes. We're kind of just trying to lay low, um, trying to do as little of work on the truck as we can. But every year it seems like, oh, well, broke a rear shock mount <laughs> off, yep. you know, or, what do you guys are you running gps or are you just oh yeah so what do yep. you use for so, gps so we have a low rants um okay. touch screen in the truck uh so we run the low rant system and uh you know so we get the map uploaded if you don't have a low rants if you're not running gps in the desert for koh you're, like, screwed. you're screwed yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well we saw He's that a, we saw that driver's meeting this year yeah is the whole gps thing was a debacle is oh, is yeah. Terry Madden and and uh, Dave Cole got in that got that yep. big fight with uh, Von Gitten about about uh, VCPs and everything? And it's all over, yeah, all over yeah, uh, the I GPS mean, stuff. Yeah, I mean it's 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 always an issue every year, and there's always course changes that happen right before the race. Of course, and you know where, <laughs> you know where we have to make all of our own race notes. If you do like like Vegas Torino, they give you the race notes. Yeah, somebody else has done it. Pre ran they give it. You the race notes. Yeah, all that stuff. You, they've they've already pre run it. They've given you like all the dangers. You know exactly where you need to be. Um, from what I understand and what I've been told, like you don't even have to pre run necessarily for hmm. that race because those notes are so good. Hmm. When you get into situations like King of the Hammers, you know it's constantly changing and evolving. And then you know, like one year we, like the day before the race, like stock class got another bypass, and it's like, what do you mean? So it's like. So we pre-ran something. Now, where does that bypass exist? Oh, but by the way, you don't have enough time to go see the bypass. Yeah. You know, you can't get out there to go see it because it's a live race course. So, you know, they, they're constantly changing things. So when they had that argument, I, I, I would assume that it's around um, the legalities of how far how something far off, is yeah. off course. Mm. And as much as that is a race strategy, um, you know, Dave's pretty about like, you know, it ha you have to, he wants you to be on the rock trails. But the rules state that you can be 50 feet off the rock trails. So, you know, where does that gray line exist? Yeah. You know, if the, so he, it's contradicting the rules. And so if it does, if it's within the rules, it's not illegal. So the, I think Vaughn and, and um, Terry were just trying to clarify, like, how far out of the scope is this, this rule? Yeah. Um, you know, not rule to, for us to, to do a race strategy. And I think that's where it kind of exploded. But again, if it's not clearly marked, it opens oh, up. Shit, my computer's dying. Hold on. All right. What's up guys. We're back. Figured out the technical difficulty. I brought Tim my fucked up. I womp, fucked up. Womp. Brought my computer, didn't bring the charger and it died. So uh, now we've got my phone on Facebook video chat sitting in the corner. <laughs> um, Daniel, Daniel's phone. still Nobody here. Nobody puts baby in a corner. And we're, uh, <laughs> we're back. So where, where, where were we about? So uh, before you were rudely interrupted by technical difficulties, you were talking VCPs. about VCPs and figuring out the course and everything. Yeah. So I think basically just, you know, it was a whole thing that every year we battle with. And it was just them trying to figure out, like, exactly what they could get away with which yeah. is part of racing honestly oh yeah, yeah if and, you ain't cheating um, you ain't trying it, it was yeah. definitely it was definitely hard from an outsider's perspective like watching the youtube video of it because you couldn't really hear the questions they were asking you could make out just a little bit of it but all you could really tell was dave was getting pissed and then it just yeah blew i mean he, up. and i mean he clearly handled it inappropriately from a director owner standpoint i mean but, he gave him a compliment on his hair you know, i mean he, he, he <laughs> backed it up yeah yeah i think when you make personal attacks you're you're just yeah you're, you're not gonna you're, win you're, that battle you're bad yeah. you're doing bad business yeah yeah i was i was very curious to get a different perspective on that like the fan perspective um i don't know maybe i'm weird about it but like i don't love how commercialized some of the off-road and racing stuff is getting you know like like i get i i like that there's that much attention on it um you know i i think some people are abusing and jumping on a bandwagon uh, i'm not saying you know necessarily vaughn specifically or any of those guys but 
there are definite, um, I don't know, safety concerns, I'll call it, of <laughs> like people just kind of jumping on the bandwagon like, oh, I can do that. And they've got the budget because of yeah, social media and YouTube and all this other stuff. And they're just going out there and it's like, you know, are you... Are you competing to compete? Like, like I'm a I'm a competitive person, right? Like, if I'm going to yeah. do it, I want to put the effort into actually win. Or are you just doing it for likes and views? Yeah, are you doing it for the cloud? Are you doing it because you yeah. actually want to race? And I can see how some of that mentality is probably frustrating to the guys who started it. You know, Dave Cole, who's put the effort in and and made the race what it is, and it's like now you get all these wannabes kind of coming out and. You know, it's, I'm not against new people joining the sport. It's just, are you joining it because you actually want to be in the sport and race and, and try and win? Or are you just there to 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 show up and say you did it kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think that was kind of I, – I, I agree with you on that. I, I think I like all the publicity that's coming out on it yeah. because that's the only way that people like myself can get partners and sponsors and, like, the social media aspect, like – you know, I've pushed it further than a lot have in this class because that was the only way that I could get visibility for yeah, the yeah. partners that I have. Yeah. You know, because the 4600 class hasn't been getting eyes on it until recently with Bronco. Yep. You know, coming into the this thing. And and they still only televised the first three cars, which happen to be all Broncos. Yeah. You know, <laughs> well, so there's still like this kind of battle with that. Yeah. But um, I just, uh, yeah. I think this year was interesting, though, with their qualifying is how they ran the qualifying course, you know, up chocolate thunder yep. back mm-hmm. and around the loop. It, it separated like those the, 100%. the people that are just coming in to oh, yeah. this and like, Oh, I can do this because I have the budget. I have the money. Well, no, <laughs> no, like, yeah. this is serious. Yeah. Shit. Oh yeah. And, yeah. and hammers hammers. You don't even see half the rock trails. They're not even accessible to people yep. to come watch you. They are no joke. Yeah, like yeah. shit. Like you, you pull up to it and you're like, I'm going to go through that on 35s. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're, we're like, we, we wheel a, a lot together and like, we've done some gnarly stuff and pretty much the whole hammers week, we sit around the computer, or the TV at the shop, all of us going, Jesus Christ, how are they going to do that on 35s? <laughs> yeah. Like, like I can't imagine taking my rig through it and I've got 35s. <laughs> like I got stuck on rocks a third of the size of this shit on Chocolate Thunder two weeks ago. <laughs> like I, it's, yeah. it's, it's, I, I want to do it, but I also, like I said, you know, I want to at least have a real shot at finishing. Yeah. Maybe not necessarily yeah. winning, but at least finishing. And like, I know what, you know, that takes fabricated nine inches atlases. It takes that fifty, yep. sixty, seven thousand I mean, dollars. I've, I've raced KOH five times and haven't finished yet. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you, and you've got the rig that yeah. <laughs> that I, I want to at least start with. Yeah. So But yep. I mean And I mean I've we've gotten close. I mean I've yeah. I've DNF'd in the top nine every year. So like first first year I think we like DNF'd in sixth position on the like sixth furthest. Um, I'm not going to say we like we placed six. We really it was we were at sixth position, the sixth furthest. Right. We got national points for being sixth furthest on the trail. So um, I think we've done like six, ninth, seventh. Um, I think fifth was their closest. Is that getting timed out or is that breakdowns? Um, Depends on the year. <laughs> no, yeah, la- last year uh, your brake seemed pretty brutal. You you lost uh, all five wheel studs on an axle. Oh, didn't you? That wasn't that wasn't last year. That was the year before. Okay, so that that was twenty. Way to mess it up, Tim. No, twenty twenty one. That was a brutal year. We actually finished ninth furthest out of like twenty seven cars. Damn. Um, I say finish. We I shouldn't say finish. We DNF ninth furthest on the trail right um and then last year we just ran out of time um we got you know in a huge bottleneck in one of the canyons and we just were waiting for like two hours oh damn just sitting waiting for two hours and um you know and people aren't getting out of the way they're not moving their trucks it's aggravating and you know so we ended up getting through got up chocolate thunder um you know late at night and uh, got another, like, I think we are like, 30 miles from the finish. Yeah. 
Damn. That's that's damn. That's so frustrating. Like that that shit gets frustrating on a Saturday afternoon when you're out on a trail weekend with your buddies. Yeah, you spent thirty dollars to get in the park. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine five grand to get into King of the Hammers and yeah. you're just like, move your shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I imagine everyone comes together. I'd like to think that everyone in race cars t- comes together to get shit out of the way to keep the course moving. Is that how that works on the trails or is it is it everyone not not all the time. Yeah. Not all the time. That's Sometimes you get you get the the one guy that thinks he knows everything and he doesn't, doesn't let anybody you know, touch he's his... halfway done fixing his shit, you know, because he started working on it when nobody was there. Mm. And then two hours later, he's still trying to fix it and he doesn't want to move it now. And you're like, can we just winch you over? Like, can we just move you just a little bit? You know, there's no way to get around him. Yeah. But it's like, if you had just moved your shit before you started. Yeah. This we, would be a problem. Yeah. We could have easily gotten past you. Yeah. Well, it's not 4,400. You know, so people aren't driving over each other in the, the 46 <laughs> yeah. class. So it's it's really just. Oh, no, a- we still we still do. Um, <laughs> I, I drove over a buddy, uh, you know, two years ago. But I asked him. I was like, "Hey, I need to get around you." And you know, so I drove over his front fender. And but I asked him. I was like, "I'm gonna dent your car a little bit." He's like, "It's fine." <laughs> I mean, I, f- I feel like you when know. you're out in rocks that big, like. It, it's either somebody else or yeah. the course that's doing your vehicle in. Like it's, yeah. there's no way around it. <laughs> Motivation to not. Yeah, I mean, you ask. You, the the courtesy is to ask for permission. Yeah, you course. know, you don't intentionally try to break somebody else's shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but knowing like, hey, you know, th- they knew that we were trying to get through, and they were like, you know, Daniel, just keep going, man. Like, yeah. we're 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 really stuck. We're really broken. <laughs> we're not moving. So yeah. now, now speaking of rigs, I know you mentioned that you you've been working with the uh, Bronkbuster a little bit. Assuming you guys are planning on trying to go out for the next race, is what you're working on with them somewhat involved with that, or is it just like something completely different? Um, as far as so, if, just like are you like are you what like, kind of rig are we? Well, not not <laughs> I'm like obviously if, if you can't say you can't say just more like is it. Is what you're working on with them related to King of the Hammers, or is it just like kind of something like offhand, like you just kind of are partnering together? A little bit of both. Um, you know, oh, you know, working with them with some uh, marketing material and uh, some showcase stuff, and okay. maybe maybe some King of the Hammers nice. things will come from it. Yeah. So are they are they expanding their scope, or are you? The ch- are they going to the are they going team? to Cherokees? Are you I, going? <laughs> yeah. Are you? Or yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which way? Yeah, are they, which gonna, way is the needle into, going? <laughs> Like a hybrid yeah. oh. Bronco Cherokee. Oh, oh, one of those EcoBoost extras. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, I, I can't speak for them specifically on what they're doing with Bronkbuster, but um, we we are working together to um, you know play with play with what we can potentially do in the future. Nice. Okay. All right. That'll so, be that'll be wild to watch come to fruition. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So it, it'll. Um, It'll change our race program a lot, um, but you know we'll still have, you know, all of our partners that we work with. Uh, you know, for the majority, um, we'll still most likely be on board. And yeah, yeah. So, and, uh, so if if that doesn't come through, do you have anything planned for the Cherokee for this upcoming race season or, or next race season? Yeah. Yep. So you know, obviously we are, we're always playing. You know, balancing everything out, but uh, Dana sixty or a high nine up front is kind of our our next transition. That'll be like the final stage of this truck. Yeah. Um, you know, the Dana forty four, as much as it was a contender early on in racing, um, it's it's not anymore. Yeah. You know, we yeah. need you need we need thirty five spline outers. Um, we break the nineteen splines regularly on thirty fives and yeah. you know, so thirty five spline outers and inners and Big boy stuff is kind of what we need now. Would you would you just keep upgrading the XJ, or would you build something else to jump to like forty fives? That's the other thing that's kind of playing in in our um, scope is we're looking at, uh, you know, I, I'd like to build like a forty eight hundred class truck. Okay, a little legends class. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Yeah, I, I feel like if I ever yeah. got into like the buggy world, the the <laughs> legends is. Seems like the most so cool, achievable, and, and most fun. Like, yeah, uh, the whole single shock, you know, it's still trailing arm. Well, and we have but. we have the contact to, contacts to, to build a Legends card. Sure. Do you know um, uh, Legacy Offered Racing, George Schooley? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a uh, he lives he's about 15, ish, yeah. 20 minutes from here. Yeah, uh, Miller, uh, nice. Miller Motorsports yeah, is Miller about Motorsports an hour is... north of us. Yep. So yeah, a lot of a lot more East Coast representation than yeah. I think people remember. So but yeah, I had a guy reach yeah, out to no me on, um, on Instagram. I can't remember his tag because my phone's over there. <laughs> um, but he's like, "You guys are cool because you guys are East Coast and you guys are actually talking about Ultra Four. Like, there's nobody on." Yeah. The East Coast that gives a shit. I'm like, dude, we're everywhere. Represent. Yeah. There, there's people all over, up and down the yeah. East Coast, Central, that that care about this stuff. You just got to find them. It's a small community. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah, and actually, that's. Yeah, I mean, that's why we're still going to probably race like Tennessee this year. We're going to still see what we can do. Um, as long as we get the new axle put in to this truck, um, we'll probably race those. And um, you know, it's this is, truck isn't retiring it. You know just yet uh we're just still kind of seeing what's happening with the with gear monkey racing and in the development of it you know as as any race team will say like you're always trying to figure out how to develop it further and bigger and better (laughs) um you know how do you get more marketing dollars Uh, how do you you know so you know appease everybody or you know make your partners happy um the for the ROI that they're looking for. So, you know, it's, it's always a challenge. It's always a battle. Yeah, are, I mean, are, are you guys potentially looking at trying to do like multiple vehicles for racing at some point? Yeah. yeah, yeah. At some point, um, you know, the only problem is, is that, you know, for the every man challenge, you know, they're racing the 46, the 45, the 4,800 classes all together. Yeah. 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 So the only way that you, we could do that is if, you know, we had a 4,400 class truck yeah. or a UTV, well, if, um, if, and if you, know, you guys move away ch- from uh, if you move away from the Cherokee and you want a Virginia based team, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I, I got a Lee Spring YJ with a blown up motor that Ugh. may work as a forty five hundred car. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just needs uh, about uh, fifty thousand dollars worth of <laughs> safety parts equipment yeah. and safety equipment. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Buy, buy our t shirts, people, so we can <laughs> yeah. do fun things. Do you find yourself <laughs> kind of living a double life? Because I feel like a lot of the people that race these races, especially like. Uh, ultra four races people don't realize that there's this, that second part of the life where they're ra- also like a quote-unquote professional race car driver does that yeah. surprise people in your life yeah <laughs> <laughs> like oh what do you do on the weekends oh, i race an xj yeah, through I've the desert got, like, what got a yeah. race team of a professional race car driver yeah, yeah. Uh, you know people ask me like oh what do you do I'm, and i just like blanket like i'm an entrepreneur i do a bunch of different things yeah. like oh cool but like what i'm like I race off road trucks. D- yeah. Depends on what so state like, I'm in. What do you What do you mean? And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, and then I have to show them like a video or an Instagram, and they're like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's usually at like my wife's. Like, you know, we were at her um, holiday dinner party. She she works at she's a OBGYN, a nurse manager, and um, she you know I'm not around all these like nurses and doctors and stuff and their husbands. <laughs> yeah, they're all very basic, you know. But it, you know, and here I am like sitting there like. Like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, oh, well, this week I'm a race car driver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Next week I'm on photo shoots. Yeah. yeah. And then the week <laughs> after that I'm selling fireworks. Yeah. They're like, oh, I can't relate with any of that. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Cool. See you later. Good, good, good yeah. talk. Yeah. Someone just sits there and goes, oh, so you're a bum. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so what do you do again? Yeah. I have no idea. Exactly. <laughs> I have fun for a living. Yeah, yeah. whatever I want. <laughs> I blow things up. I, I race to, yeah. race trucks. <laughs> that's that's just a fun day at work. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be. Yeah. Agreed. <sighs> yeah. No. The the firework thing is it's fun, but yeah, I get um, I definitely get like double. T- you know, it is kind of like you're living a double like a double life in a sense of just I do a little bit of everything, and I'm and that's how I've framed my life, and that's for me is what's brought me the most happiness. So I, for me, like, I know, like, I always get that double look. And, you know, my wife is at this point, you know, we've been married 11 years. She's kind of accepted that, like, <laughs> this is what he does, yep. you know? Yeah. And, you know, and it, I don't have to, you know, if, if I have to explain it to somebody too much, they're not my people. Yeah. yeah. You know, the people that get me, and I'm just like, I do a lot. I'm an entrepreneur and I have fun. They're like, nice. Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I you don't. know. Otherwise, it's people that are like <laughs> stuck in their nine to five, and they. You mean? Oh, yeah, well, that's that's the same boat that we're in. Like, yeah. like we're we've all made uh, in our lives, and we've kind of like for me personally. I know you guys run the off road shop. Yeah. Um, but for me personally, I'm a building inspector. When people ask me what I do, I run a podcast, and yeah. then when I'm not doing that, I'm beating my my Cherokee up in the woods. Yeah. They're like, 
Oh shit! I didn't. I didn't see that from you. Yeah, it's 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 a fun life to live for. Yeah. Hey, at, at, to dirt, live nerd, that life. at dirt nerds off road, we have one saying: behind every good off roader is a sugar mama <laughs> yeah. who's paying for your whole life. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's not wrong. But yeah, no, I, I I I definitely can relate and get it. You know, it's I get the same thing. It's like, oh, what do you do? Oh, I work on jeeps, and it's like, oh, that's cool. And then it gets deeper, and then it's like, well. Yeah, I also own the shop that I, I work at. And they're yeah. like, oh, <laughs> like oh, so you're like yeah. you're in this, and it's like, yeah, I don't yeah. really have a choice. Yeah, no. kind of. <laughs> like I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna waste all of my time working on jeeps, whether it's my paycheck or not. Yeah. So I might as well get paid to do it. <laughs> kind of how I look at it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I usually yeah I, I obviously with a family I, I've had to you know I don't get to work on the jeep as much as i would if i it was like in my garage like right. at home like i have a shop here um and it's like 15 minutes from my house but uh when i have like big projects i actually like my team comes out and like works with me for like a week they all work nice. remotely oh, from nice. their jobs see you bums um, yeah so, help me fix my race car <laughs> i was pulling teeth to get yeah. him here to help me to have somebody turn the crank while i was I- here <laughs> pulling teeth <laughs> pulling teeth i said you said come help me i said okay <laughs> Oh yeah, no. That oh, extra hand team. helps. I mean, oh, yeah. try try explain to a four year old to turn the key <laughs> yeah. and push the button at the same time. It does not go well. I I hold the light. It's, damn it! It's been it's been a while, but I used to make my wife help me bleed brakes and yeah. like like hook up the trailer back it back in the truck up to the trailer usually led to some sort of argument. <laughs> so I try and avoid <laughs> avoid that. You do this every time. <laughs> well, my, my favorite is she'll she's really good at pointing. Oh, and then like she's like not in my mirror and pointing, <laughs> and it's like I, you, you got to use your words. Like I can't, I can't see what you're looking at. She's like you're almost there, and I'm like, oh, okay, that doesn't help me. <laughs> yeah, Danielle doesn't help me with anything. Um, oh, you're you're, Dan- uh, you're Daniel later. and Danielle. Yes. Oh, <laughs> wild! Wow. Yep, Daniel and Danielle. Uh, Every time we are on a plane, our na- names are spelled the exact same. Uh, oh, so it's Daniel. Uh, Daniel. Because they take they cut the last yeah. two letters of the first name off, so yeah. the only like difference is like male or female. <laughs> That's wild, so, sir. Why do you have two yeah. plane tickets in your name? At least you were nice enough not to give your kids D names, also. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, they uh, they doubled at, at TSA. They like yeah. have, they've pulled our tickets back before because they're like. Did I just read that twice? Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, but she, she doesn't help me on anything on the the race car. She she's like, that's your shit. You're yep. you're the idiot that started that. And I respect. Oh yeah. it. I mean, I, that's I'm that's like, a smart know, wife yeah. right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's we, we've gotten to that point as well. Where my wife's just like, okay, you do you. You yeah. don't don't hurt yourself. She's like, <laughs> yeah. She's like, don't you have friends to help you? I'm yeah. like, yeah. honestly, sweetheart. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I work I work on my stuff in the driveway in my gravel driveway at home and I'm like, please just help me for a second. And she's yeah. like, that's your fucking thing. Get yes. your friends to come over. I'm like, damn it. Damn it. A hundred percent. Yep. Uh-huh. It, it, it's like, all right, you know what? I can respect that boundary. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for just, I'm glad I still have it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's better for our relationship anyway. Like I love her too much to keep getting in arguments over oh, where yeah. the flashlights pointed. Will uh, she come uh, to hammers with you or any of your races? Uh, she's been to a couple races. Um, no, she hasn't been to Hammers yet. Um, at some point, she said that I have to bring a fifth wheel. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, it has to be a nice one. Well, we may be bringing and, one next year if we go, so. Yeah, and oh, she said that she has to be able to take a shower regularly. Yeah. I'm like, you know, now you're asking for a lot. Yeah, like, Give rough. me a break. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's the just, desert. There's you a hill two willing, hours away. I was going to say, <laughs> is she willing to commute several hours per day to take that shower? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Palms... I've considered just having her come out and like staying in Palm Springs for a minute, mm. you know, just like right around the race act itself. But it's like, what's the point? Like, honestly, unless like she's enjoying the desert, which yeah. it's not an enjoyable environment. Keenan <laughs> Hammers is dusty, yeah. gross. Like, no, no, I, it's, I it's 100% like enjoyable, family man. friendly. Everyone <laughs> yes. should go always. Yeah. <laughs> I, I literally have to burn all the clothes that I, I was wearing for, like, that week. <laughs> You know, it's yeah. So I get that. if she's not enjoying it, and, and really, you don't get to watch the race. It's like, oh, I get to see. You. It's like, oh, great. I'm love. I love that you're here. Yeah. But yeah. I'm never gonna get to see you. So yeah. she watches it. I I get keep her posted. She likes. She watches it online and stuff, and, okay. and listens to the race. But 
It's all right. It's that's my good. it's my guy time. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think I think that's that's <laughs> probably one of the best things because it is the guy time. It's it's I'll do my thing, you do your thing, and we'll come together and do our thing together. And that that's really yeah. I yeah. think that's really important for my, at least my relationship. Yeah. Well, so, somehow we've managed to convince all of our wives that we should be allowed to do all these things together. Yeah. And not yeah. Have individual guy timed. Yeah. And somehow. They're just like, just don't die. Yeah. Like, okay, I'll try yeah. not to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what my wife says. She's like, just don't die, please. And yeah. I'm like, I'm going to do my best. Uh, <laughs> no promises. It's apparently though. dangerous, but uh, yeah. I'm glad you trust me that I that I should trust myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna rely on other people to make sure I don't die because yeah. we're gonna do some dumb shit. My, yeah, yeah. My my yeah. Per, my personal rule is no more than three pieces. If I come home in three pieces or less, we're good. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty brutal. Three that's pieces. a pretty. I mean, that's that's. Really I would like to come home in one piece. Thank you. Yeah, I mean the goal is always one, but the rule is three. I prefer two. I think two. If I lose a finger. Well, it can, okay. Yeah, if, if it breaks I mean, off. It's, it's, if you think about it, it's really just a testicle in each hand, and then you're yeah. <laughs> See? It's he a normal, it. normal Tuesday. Well, yeah, it, it, yeah, it depends on where you get cut, because getting cleaved in two, eh, it's not I'm the not, best. I'm not, like, completely in two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like PJ cut yeah. his finger off at the cove. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that counts as one, that's one and a half pieces. Also so w- true. When you travel <laughs> up north to uh, to New York, <laughs> do you drive or do you fly? I imagine you fly. I, dr- I drive. Oh, shit. You come right by the house. Yeah, you know where Winchester, Virginia is. Yep. Yep. That's I live 15 minutes from Winchester. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, my uh, father-in-law he lives in um, Virginia. He's he's in Elizabeth. Oh. Uh, okay. I don't know where that is. I don't know where that is either. So. Nice. That's yep, a so, long drive. Yeah, I usually you. drive up uh, right through bad. there, and um, yeah, I usually. I should say I drive every time. I fly probably half the time, but I have a buddy that I've dropped some boats off for him. Um, he makes custom wood boats, and oh, I've shit. driven them up north for him. Like, Damn, that's cool. Usually, when I have a job, I'll ask him if he has anything that needs to go up. So. Do you uh, hmm. do you ever get out and wheel recreationally in the race car, or or is that strictly race car things? What what is, what is rec wheeling? I don't even know. What <laughs> like like drinking a bunch of beer and going out and banging um, rev limiter with your buddies. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm I'm actually trying to. I mean. They, they don't tell you this, but when you start a race team, uh, you stop really? off-roading. Oh, I believe that. <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel about the shop, too. It's like, I'm building off-road shop so I can go off-roading all the time. Never <laughs> off-roads. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, um, I have the red Jeep, and actually I'm doing some work on it. I'm going to go – I'm going to take the kids to Colorado for three weeks this summer. Nice. nice. Um, just me and the kids, and my wife will fly out and, and meet us out there for like a long weekend. Uh, but I'm going to go out there and just feel, so uh, I'm taking, the, I'm getting the red Jeep kind of ready. Got to find the title for it. And get it <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. We were talking about that on, on Wednesday is the titles in Colorado, right? Yeah. So it's a Colorado title. Oh. He doesn't have, doesn't live at the address anymore oh. or something like that. Right. Yeah. So I had it registered in Colorado at a friend's house. Um, and then, so I had the title under my name and their name. They got their name off the title. So now it was just under my name, but still registered under their house. It's a whole big thing. And um, then I lost the title. The oh. second I got it transferred over to my name, I've lost it. So now I have to like send information to Colorado that the title's under my name because I have the Jeep now. And I have to figure it out. So to get it registered, but that's in the nice. meantime, I got that thing registered, uh, I, and everybody that's not watching, um, I'm pointing to the white Cherokee behind me. That the, race race. the race car, the race car, the race car, the race car. It's registered and it has blinkers. Whoa, Whoa. that's more than my car has. <laughs> that's more than my Cherokee. I, was, my Cherokee. I don't even think so my fancy. YJ doesn't have headlights. <laughs> it's got one. Yeah, so I uh, I keep the uh, registration. I keep the registration and the uh, insurance in a Ziploc bag under the co-driver's seat. Does it have to be registered for 4,600? No, but I I drive this on the street. That's awesome. That's awesome. (laughs) That's fantastic. (laughs) Do you get pulled over often and they're like, what the hell are you thinking? And then you're like, look, legal. Not yet. Do you put a windshield in it when you're driving it? No, Georgia, so... Because you don't have... I have to wear glasses. Luckily, <laughs> okay. I, I I always wear glasses, so I'm nice. legally allowed to drive it. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. 
I've taken it out with my race helmet before, and people look at me really funny. <laughs> oh, new and goal. You just look back and you go, "You wish you were me right now." I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put a helmet on and drive my Jeep around just for oh, the. I would pay to see that. Just for the looks. <laughs> Not because I oh, have you'll to. Get, you'll get the looks, man. You oh, will get the looks. He'll get the looks just because of what his vehicle looks like. Yeah. It'll have nothing to do with it. Which, yeah, actually, <laughs> the uh, your the shitbox reel you made has been blowing it's up been the last blown two up. days. Yeah. We've gotten like 600 likes in the last 48 hours yeah. on it. Um, so nice. we're talking. are we talking about going to AOP this year? Where are we talking about going to Tennessee? Uh, Good Union Good Ranch. Good Union Ranch. Ranch. Yeah. yeah. So if we, if we actually get down to Good Union Ranch and it's the weekend that you're available, you want to come wheeling? Hell yeah, let's do it. I guess I got to fix my Jeep now. Yeah, you got to fix your fucking Jeep. Because I'm, I'm on the fence right now of just leave the Jeep the way it is and build it over the when, next when year. Are you guys go, when are you guys trying to make it down here? Uh, I have no idea. Yes. <laughs> Pro- probably probably <laughs> late fall, honestly. You don't have a 5.2 liter V8 laying around by any chance, do you? You do. I don't. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think honestly the way our schedule is looking is late fall. Yeah. Um. To, to actually It'd get be down better there. weather for camping anyway. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, we could we could double up on Overland Expo. I would just bomb down after Overland Expo. Yeah. Do the weekend at Expo. I'm down for that. And I gotta get my truck ready. Gotta mm. finish the Jeep. What what weekend is that? Uh October tenth. Yeah. I think. It's either the eleventh and twelfth or like yeah, the Yeah, it's like the and second 10th. week of October. You wanna yeah. do a uh a listener's a listener's ride at, at uh, Good Evening Ranch. This is being recorded. I'm just putting this out there. Oh, yeah. no, I know. <laughs> oh, God. That's a lot. Make it. Oh, don't ever say that line again. Uh, I have PTSD from people saying that. I don't know. We'll, we, we, can, we can iron out those details later. Yeah. Potent- I, should, I should probably go pull the heads off my Jeep this yeah, afternoon you then. Should. Yep. <laughs> see, see if I broke a piss in and bent a, a valve or just the valve. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm I'm totally down to go wheeling. Um, we've been meaning to get down to. I want to go to AOP and we could do a whole month. Good evening, and, ranch. Oh, we could spend so much time. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, there's yeah. you. We could literally do an entire month of nothing but wheeling in Tennessee. So, so of all the places you've wheeled and raced, where would you go again if you had to choose one? Would it, I, I assume it'd be Hammers. Other than Hammers, where would you go if you had to choose one? If I had to choose one, like. One place just to go back to and wheel, go, yeah. To go again, or like that's the only place I'm ever allowed to wheel. Just to again. go again, like if you, it, like if every place you've you've gone other than Johnson Valley, where would you? Yeah, go? I was that's like, you, uh, like that's on the racing series, or that's just just, just like, in just general. Just, in yeah. general. I mean, I, I always go back to Colorado. You you can't go wrong with going out there. But um, our kind of stomping ground out there would be like Buena Vista, like Chinaman's Gulch out there. Okay. Great trail. Great. Yep. Great space, beautiful out there. Um, Moab, Moab's always yeah. a, a winner too. Did you ever, did you ever like wheel the Grand Junction area much out in like Western Colorado? Um, not so much, a, a little bit, but not not heavily. Okay, that's so I, I, we were more closer to like Denver, like Buena Vista area. Yeah. Um, you know those those areas, and then so we would do those because they're a lot closer, right? And then. The team they always do like a trip out to Moab like once a year. Yep, nice. Yeah, I used to live. Um, I worked at a car museum like west of Grand Junction in Colorado, and I kicked okay. myself for not like wheeling the area more. Um, and like now, knowing what I know now, I'm like I was literally living in some phenomenal rock crawling, and I never, some never best, even attempted to do it. Some I just, of the best wheeling in the country. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all my yeah, like what what trail like what trails are out there? I'm trying to think. Um, um, so like the the Grand Mesa area, um, they're all like BLM land roads. Yeah. Like, um, I'm trying to remember the names of them, but there's Is just an Independence Trail out there. I believe I believe that's one of them. Um, the big one that was by me was like 28 Road or something like that. Uh, okay. That I'm. Uh, it it's just it's such a weird it yeah it's such a weird area because the the roads all have like random numbers but then a lot of the trails and stuff are still public roads with like stop signs and street signs and whatnot but they're just full blown trails. 
Yeah. yeah I'm looking at it really quick. Co- Colorado is definitely on my list. To get. I, I'd love to wheel Colorado. We did wheel Colorado. Yeah, I, I wasn't available. <laughs> I, I had to get married that Friday. We, we wheeled Colorado in a rental car. So we lived up to Daniel's dream of uh, yeah. using a rental car as an off-road vehicle. Yeah. I did that in Moab. Yeah. That's, that's we, where we, we started. We drove through yeah. Moab and ate at a diner there. Yes, yeah, so, that counts. So, <laughs> so the where I used to live was right on the Colorado border. I don't know if you're familiar with with Gateway, Colorado, um, but John Brown Canyon and like the LaSalle Mountain Road connects Moab to Gateway, and it's mostly like dirt road, um, and it's the shortcut instead of having to go all the way up seventy and around. Uh, so when we were coming back from SEMA this this year. We uh, we stopped in Moab for lunch and then took the rental car through some like probably six eight inch snow and mud. Jumped a cattle guard. Jumped a couple cattle guards. Yeah, I had to miss it. I had to get married on Friday. Yeah. So we, they, we we were in SEMA and then I got Billing, married the eleventh. Yeah. Bill, uh, Billings Canyon. Yeah, Billings Canyon. That's what I, that's what 20, I was thinking. Twenty one road. Um, Twenty one road is the one I was thinking of. <coughs> yep. Then there, there's hard knocks out there and yep. a few other pretty good ones. Yeah, that was all like 20, 30 minutes from where I lived, and I kicked myself. Yeah, I would be. I had, I had more closer car- to the trails than the grocery store. Yeah, <laughs> I had more car friends than I did uh, Jeep, Jeep friends. So like, I, I was doing a lot more like autocross and sports car type stuff. Yeah. Cool well, man. Yeah, um, back out there then. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's high on the list. Yeah. Is there uh is there anything any links you want to drop any um any social media any shouts you want to give yourself? I mean, let's see. You know, I think uh, we kind of talked about the little stuff that we're doing with Bronkbuster, but um, obviously my partners and everything, um, the people that stand out. I don't know if you guys work with them a lot, but Adam's Drive Shaft. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. We yeah. They're, they're uh, absolutely they're a sponsor the best, of the show. Yeah, the best guys around. Um, you know, they they've never not just helped us out and hooked us up like last minute you know, with, uh, different things. Yeah, uh, one, shout out to one year the hammers, yeah. we just put the new motor in and our drive shaft was too long or too short. Um, because we had switched to the third member Okay, and, uh, they overnighted one basically nice. to us in yep. California. Yeah. When we were out in, uh, in Vegas, we stopped by the shop and they were, they awesome. were awesome. Tom dropped off, uh, my broken, drive his, shaft. his broken drive shaft. We hung out, we had a, a drink we, I mean, we just we chilled there for like an yeah. hour and just just hung out. Yeah, I mean, they're they're just great people all around. Um, I work with Bulldog Winch. Um, our bumpers are Filthy Addiction Off Road shocks are Radflow shocks. Yukon Gear and Axle help us out tremendously. Um, you know, Vision Wheels, Cav Fab, Four by Four. We actually run a uh, Alcan spring. A lot of the guys use Deaver, but we run Alcan spring out of Colorado. Um, for great your leads. guys. Um, and then our uh, tires are Motor Race tire. Okay. Nice. So, and, Vis- and Vision Wheel. Vision Wheel is another partner of ours that um, you know kind of keeps us in the game. Awesome. Nice, man. Where can where can people find you on social media? Online? Uh, us, yeah, us personally, we're on um, on Instagram uh, is our most uh, active portion of what we do, and it's Gear Monkey Racing. Nice. Uh, you know, we also have you know you can find us on Facebook and everything else, and um, we have a website, but it's. Uh, it hasn't been frequented much because I, <laughs> yeah. don't, I don't ever update it. So. Yeah, know uh, that life. <laughs> cool, man. You guys but, have uh, Instagram uh, is Instagram is our place. You know, everybody yeah. can reach out to me there, and, and honestly, that's where I actually communicate a lot with our sponsors and stuff is just through that platform because it's easy and quick, and yeah. you know, easy to send photos and whatnot. Yeah, that's nice. how that's, Instagram is how I reach out to to anybody we're gonna have on the show is and it's because it's so easy and everyone's on it. Like it's not Facebook yep. is kind of is kind of dying. It's Facebook is more personal, but Instagram's where it's at. Yeah, Facebook's personal and and business. Like, yeah, like actual business stuff. But yeah, yeah. No, we, we've we've done well with it. I, you know, I have a personal Instagram too, but um, I I pretty much use the Gear Monkey Racing one as like my personal. Account <laughs> yeah, I do, like yeah, I do the same thing with the show. and overlap. So yeah, yep. Well, know. that's what we found it works just, best is I do a I do a masterminds monthly meeting with another podcast. And if you just like, like, I don't want to call it shit posting, but if you just post regularly, it's how you get the best traction and whether yeah. it be personal or business, you just have to, you just have to post on there and, and get the, get content out there. Yeah. hundred percent. So, yeah. So, I mean, we try to be as active as possible and do some fun stuff, uh, coming up this year with me going out to Colorado for three weeks, we're going to try to do a lot more content, um, more, some more installation stuff. We do have a YouTube, 
um, Gear Monkey Racing on YouTube. Uh, that has a few stuff that we're going to try to try to push out some more stuff this year I, with all the exciting things that we have coming up. I think it's uh, it's going to be that's my phone it. ringing. <laughs> well, we're a mess today. I know. <laughs> Jesus, is it just, important? Just yeah, hit, hit that end hit button end. there, bud. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'm a mess. I'm a mess, man. My computer dies. My phone rings. Um, uh, all right, man. Well, we appreciate you being on. It was awesome to to finally. Yeah. I've followed you probably since your career started since 2018. Yeah, so it's been a few years. In, uh, at at Hammers, and I've I've followed you since then, and I've we've chatted a few times on and off. I think uh, it's finally it's, yep. it's nice to finally get to know you and meet you. Um, I'm looking forward to wheeling. The weekend of October 10th, hopefully. Yeah, Tom. <laughs> we'll, I mean, I'll I'll be yeah, there. We'll, whether we'll my fi- Jeep is there with we'll us, we'll figure those dates. Yeah, out. we'll figure the dates out. <laughs> um, maybe hammers next year. We'll we'll see where we end up and where where we end up going. Um, but I'm looking forward to to getting to know you better and and chatting more and wheeling and hanging out. Um, Absolutely, guys. Yeah, no, I I really appreciate you having me on here. Um, yeah, I, I hope that uh, we can link up here in the future. Yeah. And uh, you guys are more than welcome to come come join us and road trip out to Hammers with us, and uh, you know, kind of see it from the inner workings of what we're doing. Oh, yeah. um, awesome! You know, it's it's all, it, we're, we're it, you know that's the great thing about this sport and this community is uh, just you. We're all really closely related with with what we can do and how we can help each other. And yeah. uh, you know, it it speaks volumes when when I'm able to come on to, like speak with you guys here, but also you know. Even though we haven't met in person, I know that we would all be strong assets to be able to work with each other <laughs> yeah, in the future yeah. on any other thing. So I appreciate you guys. Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. Cool, man. Yeah, um, thanks, dude. Um, yeah, I guess. Sh- uh, yeah, uh, you guys, to our listeners, you guys know where to find us, Dirt Nerds yep. Off Road, online, uh, the Dirt Drive podcast, all that stuff. Yep. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, Daniel, seriously, thank you for being on. It was super great to get to know you, yeah, get to great. meet you, and we're looking forward to, to talking to you again. Um, Thanks, Bye. guys. We Bye, will boys. we will see you guys or talk to you guys next week, uh, and that's it. Yeah. Adios. Deuces. Are you enjoying this podcast? Do you want more ridiculousness from the Dirt Nerds? Check out DirtNerdsOffRoad.com. It'll link to all of our social media as well as our YouTube page, And you can pick up some sweet merch to help support the podcast and other adventures.